All right, Pat, here we go. All right. Uh, this is the artist's computer. This is, of course, the seat. We've already gone through it, but all you'll do is rest your head in here, and it takes about 10 minutes to go through each grid. We'll go through a grid. We'll make sure the graphs look good, and then we'll take it from there and just kind of repeat the cycle all day. Perfect. Okay, so why don't you put your head right in there, and the sco yeah, scoot up there. Okay, kind of get comfortable as you can. Yep, you're comfortable? Let's see. Okay, so what I'm putting on now is called the tensioner, and lift your head up for just one second, Pat. This, this actually, with the camera on the computer goes in here, takes a picture of your scalp, and actually punches the hair in this little square. Okay. That's all that's going on. Cool. Fancy stuff here I like in it. Chicago. All right. Best city in the world. Best city in the world. The Bears' first game is tonight. Yep, Bears' first game is tonight. So we kind of lock this on, and this puts tension on the skin. So when the punch engages the scalp, the skin doesn't move. So it's a straight punch with the hair right in the center, and we get a excellent graft. All right. So this is called the pendant, and this controls the artist. So it's just not the computer doing its thing. You know, the doctor has to control the whole procedure. So here we go. And all you have to do, Pat, is stay just like you are, okay? What the artist is doing now is taking a picture of his scalp. It's looking at each individual hair, marking out the margins, and his density is good. So we're just setting parameters, looking at what we want to do. So let's begin. So now we're actually punching hair. I'm watching on the screen. I can control the depth of the punch, <clears throat> the angle of the punch, how far away the punches are from each other, because you don't want to make it too close, so it all depends on the density that he has will determine how far we put the punches. The graph quality is excellent. So let's pause a second. We always check the graphs after we've done, you can pull away for a second, Blanc. Just pull away 40 or pull back to safe or whatever you want to do. Pull back to center position. And what we're going to do right now is check the quality of the graphs because some of the critics of the artists have said that the robot just goes around and kind of does its business and if it's making bad graphs, we don't know. But this is what you do. You punch a few and with experience, you can just look on the screen and tell if you have great graphs. But I just want to show you. Let's extract some graphs. So we're removing the graphs just to take a look at them. And when you do FUE, everything's about transection rate. You know, you want, transection just means injury to the graphs. Uh, if it's a three hair follicular unit, if anything is injured, it's a transection. Simple as that. So the thing that you want to, that is the killer of FUE that everybody talks about is transection rate. Transection means, is the graft injured? It could be injured up high, it could be injured low, but if the graph is injured, it won't have the quality that it would have had. So what we do, when we start punching a grid, just to make sure we're doing everything okay, we start pulling a few of the graphs just to check. So we pulled some random graphs here, and I'm taking a look. I don't have on magnification, but Ms. Ramirez, what do, you, what do they look like there? They're very good, all of them have now we're just looking at the follicles. We punched out five or six of these. We punched, we did ten, but we punched out more than half of those, and uh, they all look good to me. I don't have on magnification, but I can see they all look good. And transection is injury of the graft, and a follicular unit can be between one hair and four hairs. If you try to punch out a four hair follicular unit and you chop off one, that's considered a transection. So this all looks good to me. There's fat under the grafts. This is a one millimeter punch. I think we're in business here. So let's get some saline on this or um, you know, some culture, I mean some uh, fluid on that so they don't dry out and let's proceed. And what we're, what we're looking at here, the artist is actually punching the graphs. Miss Anderson is kind of helping drive the computer with me. But all the graphs look great. They're elevating nicely. We've already checked to see if there's any transection. 
we haven't seen any transection in this grid yet. Uh, normal transection rates run anywhere, I'd say, 3% to up to 8%. I'm controlling the depth, I'm controlling the angle and the spacing, and we've already preset these. And as you go along in a grid, you might have to change all three of these on the fly. So you have to watch each punch. You just can't punch and then go sit down and do something else. Every punch, we evaluate. How deep is it? Is it too shallow, too deep, the angle too steep, too flat? And you can see, as they're being punched, we're extracting them as well. That kind of speeds up the process. He has great density, looks perfect there. Now you can see on the screen, <clears throat> the screen looks like a kaleidoscope. Um, you see a lot of colors. The blue on the screen shows the areas that we've already harvested. Those, have, those areas are done. The little green dot on the screen shows where the robot is going to punch out next. The purple dot even shows the next one. So you can see two graphs ahead what the robot has selected. And you might say, well, how does the robot notice what to select? The robot has an algorithm that's it's looking and thinking about each hair that it sees. It tries to pick the largest grouping, the hairs that aren't miniaturized, basically picks out the healthiest hair so it, does, it leaves nothing to, say, the human brain to kind of analyze. It's picking out the best hair quality in the back. The reason that I think this FUE is better, because the robot's picking the best hair, and I'm helping the robot select that hair, but when you do a strip and you cut out a big area of the back of the head, as we know, all the hair is not created equal. Even though the hair in the supposed permanent zone is supposedly permanent, some of that hair is miniaturized. We know that. All of it's not good. The robot does not select that hair. It selects the most thicker girth hair, the biggest groupings, basically the healthiest hair by algorithms. We'll do 300 ones and 200 twos. So the first grid, we did a great job. We punched out 126 graphs, which is about right for every grid. We usually try to get 100 per grid. Um, and we go right back into it again. Put our grid down. You want this tight because you want the hair to stay still. People who do FUE know that the hair, it's like hitting the golf ball. I mean, the golf ball is still, but you want everything to stay still. Any movement causes transection. So you want this scalp and hair to remain still throughout that punching process. So we're going for grid two. Same thing again. Bring the robot in. The robot takes a picture of the area. It's scanning the head to take a picture. So again, it's doing the same thing, scanning, looking at graph quality, follicular unit, girth. Um, Blanca, this one, I think we can decrease the spacing a little bit. I would go down to 1.8 on this one. So we're going to make them a little closer because its density is a little better in this grid. But you ha that takes some skill, just knowing how close you can get, depending on what type of hair texture they have. So when it's all said and done, you can't see like a Swiss cheese effect back there. Again, every graph, I'm looking at too shallow, too deep, too flat, too steep. That's, that rhymed too shallow, too deep, too flat, too steep. That's basically what you have to do. Too shallow, too deep, too flat, too steep. That's it. So again, the robot is selecting the hair with the green dot. The blue 
is where we've been before. And usually the area that will decrease, we'll decrease the density maybe 10, 15% in each little grid, which to the eye, the eye after it heals up and hair grows around it, can't really tell. Again, whether you have a strip or FUE, the hair we take out from here does not grow back. The hair that we move wherever grows up there. The hair back here gets thinned by the amount you take out. So the way I say it is we're robbing Peter, this is Peter in the back, to pay Paul up front. You just don't want to rob Peter so much that he's just broke and he has nothing in the back. So it's selective robbing.